Thank you, Elvin. Would you stand as you are able and join with me in singing, Christ has risen. Amen. Ye that tr truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near in faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to pass the peace of Christ to one another. Peace be with you.
Our epistle lesson this morning comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. If children and congregation come forward, I have something to share with you. Good morning. Good morning. I said, we certainly will, yeah. I think Gunner's coming too. Look at here. Oh, my goodness, big steps. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're making friends. That's all right, yeah. Oh, good. Archer on the way. Good, good. 
Archer crawled to the altar on Monday, Thursday night. Yes, he did all by himself. And here, thank you. I've got some stuff. And I think we're going to need to be very careful. Okay? Okay. Y'all remind me. This is in case we need to clean up anything. But mainly, I brought something that I hope will pretty much stay in the bag. Okay? What are those? It is not candy at all, okay? Okay. Now, and uh, wouldn't it be nice to have candy this big, wouldn't it? No, that's just me thinking. Okay. Now, what I brought are, uh, I, and help me if I have the wrong word, congregation. I, got, I know this word is right. This charcoal, those little pieces, I think they call them briquettes. Is that a word? Did you ever say that? I would never use that in my home at all, briquettes. They look like rocks, but really they are pieces of wood that have been burnt down in a way that we use them like on grills. It's called charcoal. Now, I brought it. Let me see. i got to test this first, too. Okay, hardly any smell at all. I had some at home that smelled like rocket fuel. I think they said that was like match light or something. I, I did not think it was wise, but, but, but let's not touch because it's real... It, uh, it it makes your fingers get dirty, yeah, I guess. So, but I don't know. But like you, you put it like. Have y'all ever been to a barbecue before? Yeah. yeah. I never had a barbecue before. Okay, let me just say one word to you. If you hear that it's going to be a barbecue, you show up. Okay. Barbecue means yes, everybody come. It's good eating. Okay, but to get things ready to eat, you have to cook it. And one way to cook it is to cook it over a fire. Hot, yes, you can make hot dogs on these things. Too. I'm going to just put this back because we don't want to get, I had, uh, anyway, y'all, that, that's another story for another time. This is like the cousin of glitter in sanctuaries. Okay. Now, we can't light it on fire today, right? No, we can't, not in here. That's all right, too. But I'm going to read a story about Jesus, okay? We always read stories about Jesus. On Sunday, I'll do a prayer too in just a second. But in the what I'm going to read, the disciples are out fishing on the sea. Jesus is on the beach. Y'all ever been to a beach? I yeah, did. listen, if they say we're going to a beach, yes. Ah, yes, Florida Beach. If you're going to a beach, go and be there, yes. Y'all too? Okay, good, good. Well, Jesus was on the beach I'm talking about, and they're out, they're out there fishing. And Jesus has a charcoal fire going. Jesus, and he was cooking some fish and some bread. Okay? Yes, he's right up there. I tell you, Archer will have the pulpit soon. I think he will. Yes, he will. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, very good. So I want, I want y'all, everybody, to remember that Jesus is having breakfast for disciples. He this was after he was raised. It's an Easter story after he was raised from the dead. I know Easter. I know you know Easter, and that's a very good thing. So let's just remember, Jesus comes to be with his disciples and blesses them that way. And I will preach more about also what he wants us to do. Can I pray with y'all? Fold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, for our children here and for their families, and for their church family gathered. Be with all of us. We thank you for Jesus who continues to come to us. I bless the time with him this morning. We pray in his name. Amen. Okay, thank you all so much for being here and being good with this. And let's, let's schedule a barbecue soon. Hey, you doing okay? Yes, sir. Glad you're here. Yes, okay. You're very good. High five. Yeah. Y'all be good. All right.
Friends, I invite us now to hear together the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. This is the last chapter, the 21st chapter. We'll read the first 19 verses. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have some breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. This is word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This time, let's go to God in prayer again. As we pray, may we again bring our own religious experience up to date by asking God to forgive us of all of our sins, cleanse our lives of all the things that should not be in them, and to help us at this very moment be the persons for him he would have us be. Now let us pray for at least three persons in this service or connected to this service.
calling their names silently unto God and asking that he would bless them in a very special way during this service. And then we remember those of this church and community who are sick or bereaved or having difficulties of any kind and pray God's blessings upon them. And then I would ask with your eyes open, you would pray for me as I speak to you. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Okay, who said breakfast on the beach? Picnic breakfast? Forget charcoal. Anyone had breakfast on the beach? Okay, let's all please add that to our list of things to do. Not today, because we're busy in church, okay? But at some point. And the children down here, I wonder if Jesus and the disciples had similar type of a good time. They had been through Holy Week, right? They had been through the crucifixion of Jesus. Everything is different. And now he is providing bread and fish and charcoal fire. And they're in the, in the place almost where things started. Looks like anytime Jesus talks to disciples about fishing, how well have they done? Say, not so good. Now, you're right, not so good. Almost every time. And then he's there and there's more. Some of y'all, let me try to name the class. Faith finders? Say, yes, y'all are watching some TV show? The Chosen. Okay, all right. In that, because I keep up with stuff. Well, okay, hardly ever, but still, I watch some of that, and it's a one place where there's no fish, and they really need some fish badly because they've added to the story, and that's pa uh, Peter has, like, just spent all of his money and all the money he ever hoped to have on a deal that didn't happen. I'm not going to ask you if you've ever done that. Okay, just keep your hands down. It's all right, all right. But he's in a tight spot. And Jesus said, well, I think the fish are coming. And they started coming. I'm not kidding you. It was, just, it was like uh, fish were bubbling up out of the water. They were jumping into the boat. All of them were just, we can't believe it, we can't believe it. And Jesus is just laughing. Do you all think about Jesus being happy? I hope you do. Oh, my goodness. I found myself watching that, and I'm thinking, when was the last time that I thought about Jesus being happy? I was convicted. It's wrong. I hadn't been doing that. I'm encouraging you. Jesus happy that y'all are here today? Oh, my goodness, he is. I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all. It's because y'all are y'all. He's just delighted. Now, I don't know if he's going to take us fishing or something. I sent her the video. I was fishing here in the sanctuary. It was not very good fishing. All right, I can tell you that. But that's a different thing. But I just wonder, you know, let's keep in mind how much the love of Jesus is part of all of us. And the disciples, they knew it was happening too. It was a, a tough moment, I believe, in those first 19 verses for Simon Peter. Yeah, again, I'm not much of a fisherman, but I'll tell you one thing. When I was fishing off the balcony here in the Highland United Church inside the sanctuary, you can bet that I was fully clothed. I even had my hat on. Yeah, I don't recommend that anybody get in the water fishing like Peter and had you had to get dressed to get off the boat. Mercy. Now, maybe nighttime, you don't have to worry about moon burn or something like that, but I, you got to have some decency. All right. But, so, but he's running on in. Isn't he hauling the whole net in? 153. Some people say that was a known number of different types of fish in the world. 
symbolic of that's everybody. You know, if y'all can name more in your mind, you can play this with me if you aren't going to. If you can name 20 fish, you come on up here later on and tell me. But listen right now. It's everybody. He's pulling them in. But I tell you, when he smells Peter, when he smells that charcoal fire, they didn't have any of that match light, but they had charcoal going on. You remember the last time he smelt it? Y'all remember? I hope so. They had built a fire outside of Caiaphas's place. You know, where Jesus was on trial? They had built a fire out there. You know, now don't answer this. Y'all ever been there somewhere you have to build a fire? It's so cold. I can just picture some of y'all, you standing around a, a oil can. It was on those big old gallon, you know, thousand gallon things. It got to be there. Oh, it's so cold. I'm poor, something like that. Well, they're out there, and you know, in that fire, people kind of looked at Peter and said, I think I know who you are. I know where I've seen you. I know who you follow. I know you're a Galilean. What does Peter say? No, no, no. John doesn't make a big deal about it, like some of the gospel, but John brings it around for us because the one who betrayed Jesus the one who denied Jesus, saying, you know, don't know him. Peter. Jesus brings him back, doesn't he? You love me? You love me? Third time, do you love me? And then he gives to Peter those things to do, to, to, uh, to feed and to tend. The great shepherd, the real shepherd, tells Peter, to be a shepherd. That word is translated shepherd, tend, translated pastor. What a wonderful word there and something that we get to do to help feed, to help tend. It was quite a, quite a thing for him. And I wonder for us, is John, the fourth gospel, the last chapter, some say it's an add-on chapter, that's a whole nother debate, the last chapter, might he be saying that A, perhaps not the only, but A, proof of the resurrection, A, proof that Jesus is alive, that he has conquered death, that he is in the world, A, proof of that is people like all of us feeding and tending to one another. That's something for us to do. Something for us to do. Yeah. Have y'all, don't let the children in on this. Okay, sorry, sorry. I think it might, could be dangerous. Y'all ever heard of Tootsie Roll Pops? Okay. I don't even know if they still exist or not. I would say be very careful. Okay, if there are children listening, be careful with that. The stick is a, really, it's a two-edged sword. It has good, it has bad. The good part is you're not going to swallow that piece of hard candy. Okay, on, on choke on it. You know, they, I was down at Lake Junaluska, the, the place for Methodist preachers back in the 60s to take their families to learn something, and the families just sat around and let people give them uh, hard candy to get choked on. So I can remember... Uh, my mama's trying, and some man grabs me by the ankle and hits me, you know, and I spit that thing out. I thought then, you put a stick on it, you're not going to choke on it. Right, right, okay. Right. Uh, but the other side of that sword is you run with that and you fall down, something bad could happen. So just tend to it, tend to it. However, as a child, I liked those things. I was an entrepreneur cutting grass, maybe 12 years old, Urbana, Virginia, Father was a superintendent of the then old Rappahannock district. I'd run into a little trouble with, had gone to the barbershop, taken $20 with me for maybe like a $2 haircut. I got there to uh, Mr. Taylor, his name, and I didn't have any money. I lost $20, and, tw and excuse me one minute, and that was real money back then. I'm sorry to let you know that, okay. Uh, and, and so I had to start making that money back. I had not cut grass before, but I cut our yard. Yes, I did. And then some, I don't know, 
Anyway, I'm cutting about a mile away. I've cut this lady's yard. I got my lawnmower. I got my can of gas, because you never know. Gas was a whole 35 cent a gallon. So you be careful with it. And on my way home, in the enjoyment of a job well done, I've got a Tootsie Roll pop in my mouth, and I've taken the vow, I will not bite. OK? Y'all know what I mean. OK. So I'm just going along. Across the road is the uh, Exxon station. Lewis Jones had that uh, franchise. He had just started doing that. This is Urbana, Virginia, maybe roughly 1970. Situations at that time in that town where we were not very racially inclusive. Mr. Jones did not live in Urbana, but he had the, the gas station there. And most people didn't like that. Okay? Sad but true, most people didn't like that. Didn't like him. It just affronted things, and, and sadly, it took them a while to get over it. But here, 12-year-old or whatever I am, coming down, trying not to bite into that piece of uh, uh, whatever, that candy thing. And he, from across the street, says, Young Carson. And he said again, Young Carson. Again, I've got, I've got a vow about this candy and stuff, but I've got it, so I have to take it out of my mouth to say, huh? <laughs> I mean, you've got to get you have some words to say. I said, huh? One thing about these masks we were wearing, like my mouth was going, huh, a lot, okay? <laughs> but y'all didn't, no one got to see that. I, I, I thought, oh, I'm so thankful, because I, I bet I'm looking like, huh, right now. But, okay, but, but. So I just say, huh? And when I get this out, he says, all right, go on. So I start going on, and I'm thinking, he thinks I was smoking a cigarette. <laughs> oh, that's what he thought. And, you know, I, I didn't, but I thought about it a little further on the way home. I mean, I'm still, I haven't bitten, I tell you. I did, yes, never have. I always, always got a bite, okay, but still, it's, it's good, we can't. Do they still? I don't know. But on, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Who does he think he is? Right? And no, I'm not, I'm not sad. I am glad. I'm saying, how the goodness. What courage. He's not just, you know, calling the preacher's son down. He's calling the district superintendent of the Rappahannock District of the United Methodist Church, calling him to, oh, so he's going to talk to me. I say, yes, indeed, he better talk to me. He ought to. Oh, so it, was, it was a tremendously wonderful thing. Now, it didn't go right in the district newsletter. I don't think I ever told anybody, you know, but I think about it, and I'm saying that, that ought to be every one of us. But mercy, we see a lot worse happening, and yet we don't have opportunity to say, opportunity to tend to. You know, if my daddy hadn't bought gas, the daddy had credit cards to get gas you know, out of town, but I think in town he would just run a tab, and he'd pay it off when he had money. That's, you know... And so, I mean, that man wanted me to do well. Yes, he did. I don't know what, you know, the way, way Mama talked, Daddy didn't pay it as often as, as everyone would have liked. But we, we, we're square. We're square. But we have, we have a community of people that we need to be concerned about. And, and not to be reckless, not to be put in danger or something like that, but to have skill, to have, have names. I wonder how many United Methodist churches in, just say America, don't know the names of 
people who live in the, uh, just the adjacent properties. We've got like a block type of thing here, you know. I went to a funeral of a neighbor at a church I was serving. Didn't know who she was. She was killed in a rough way, a, a, an accident. I went to her funeral. Her brother was in, in connected with whatever faith they had that he did the service. And he said, in the service, y'all straighten up or y'all end up in hell just like she has. I have never heard anything like that. And I, I would, I would, isn't that funny a bit? I'm telling you, that is exactly what he said. And I was convicted then. And did I ever say a good word to her? Did we ever have her at church? And if we didn't, what in the world is wrong? A sign that Jesus is alive is that the church is tending to people. My goodness, things are things are worse in 1970. Okay, tending to, feeding. So it might be that you feel that this is away from you because something has gotten in the way between you and Jesus. And Jesus sure isn't asking you to help prove that he is alive in the world. But you might just reflect on being the best, the head disciple who at a crucial hour just says, no, I don't know. I challenge, is there anything, anything that you could imagine about yourself that was going to separate you out from Jesus? Well, Peter's story is there to help any of that type of concern. But how he wants to call us all to breakfast. No fish here today, okay? But the bread's here. It's not like we'd cook it, I know. And the juice is here, but Jesus is here. His forgiveness is here. His calling us to love him is here. And his encouraging us to feed and to, uh, to tend to one another. I think communion is coming. Am I right? Yes. Suzanne, if you'll open the altar and I'll be prepared to... Friends, if you'll stand as you're able, please. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the day that you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup. 
On that night, he gave himself up for us. He took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us uh, sing together, O Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. will receive and, and will share together after all have received the body and blood of Christ.
this is the body of Christ which is given for you. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you with faith and be thankful. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you with faith and be thankful. Amen. We'll respond with singing together, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Please know that during the singing, if that be a time that you'd like to pray, communion prayers here at the altar, come and do that. Also, we have uh, addresses of folk that uh, we don't get to see very often, but if you'd like to be praying and, and contacting them, uh, their names are right here. Let's stand as we're able and join, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Go forth now in peace to serve God and your neighbor, by feeding and tending, and the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>